Howdy, folks, and welcome to another episode of Inside Rick Athletics. I'm Cody Shaw. For today, I'm joined by Angelina Nardolillo of the women's basketball team. Hello. Ange, thanks so much for taking some time joining me here. Thank you for having me. Of course. So, you know, as well-known fact, the women's basketball team, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> another well-known fact, you're pretty good. So how, I mean, got on campus last year as a freshman you know, it just took you a couple of weeks to get that starting <laughs> spot, and then you ran from there. It was a rookie of the year. It was all region teams, all conference teams. You really, you know, first step, put it down, and mm -hmm. it was the right foot. So how how was it kind of adjusting from high school to college? It seemed like it was a pretty easy adjustment. Um, from high school to college, it was hard. It was a lot different. The defense that um, Coach Jenna teaches is a lot different from the defense I played. I played a 2-3 zone my entire <laughs> high school career, and then we play man, and the way that she plays man was also uh, difficult for me to learn. But I started getting the hang of it towards the end of the season, so transitioning from last season to this season was a lot better. But it was like AAU, like right. a lot of high like pace, man-to-man. Yeah. Good, and uh, you did a, a prep year, if I, re if I recall correctly. Yes. Uh, what's the decision to go into that? Because it's kind of like pre-college, like you're away from the family, you're doing you know, whatever it is. So what was your decision to decide to go prep? So sophomore year, I scored my 1,000 points. Oh, and Look at you go. Um, freshman year, um, we won a championship. And then sophomore year, we ended up losing the championship to the same team that we won the year before. And I just kind of wanted more for myself. I mm -hmm. wanted to kind of run away with basketball. And I knew that um, I got my 1,000 my sophomore year. I mean, something must have. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to go a little higher, push myself a little more. So I started looking into prep and ended up being a day student at NMH. Mm -hmm. And I was only there for a year. And then COVID cut that short. And right. I didn't want to stay on campus being 10 minutes away from home. So I decided to return back home for my senior year. But prep was definitely a molding point. I knew I wanted to go higher. I didn't think I would want to go to a Division three, But I realized that I wanted to go to a Division three, And I wanted to have that um, student-athlete balance right. versus just athlete and no time to have a social life or no right. time to do anything. So. You yeah, know, that's, that's what's the great part about Division Three. I mean, I think we, we look at the competition levels, and I think everyone has the perception that, oh, my God, it's you know, anyone played in high school can play in D3, but it's really not no. the case. Like, the high school kids who are playing in D3 were the top high school yeah. kids. I, I played with a kid who scored 2,000 points, and, you know, he got to – he went to D3, and that yeah. was as far as you could go. He was filthy. Yeah. Um, also, for comparison, 1,000-point scorer as a sophomore, yeah. 13 career points. So, thanks, guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. I got hurt my senior year. It would have been more. But anyway, so – you come to college, you have a fantastic first year, and you're, you're following up with probably even better second year, especially defensively. I know, like you said, defensively, that first year it took you a second, but you've really flown with it halfway mm -hmm. through your first year. And this year as well, I see you know, the feet move a lot mm -hmm. quicker than last year. The hands are in the right position. Yeah. And uh, How have you really learned to grow defensively? Um, a lot of it was just Coach Jenna being like, you just need to be in the right spot at the right time. Um, working on my speed, I worked on my first step a lot, especially during preseason with Coach B. He was a really good trainer. He got our speed. So I just focused on playing more like a guard versus mm -hmm. a center. Right. And that's what has helped me. And that's kind of the direction step. basketball's yeah. heading. Positionless. It's positionless. And you see, you know, guys who are seven foot handling the rock yeah. and, you know, me as a big man back in my day, I, I can appreciate a good post game, mm -hmm. but you have to hit 15 yeah. footers. So you exactly. have to keep the defense honest. So, how have you evolved your offensive game from maybe where you were in high school to where you are now? It was like a jump shot. I know you're working on that. Was it something you always been trying to work on, or something as you see in the game evolve? You're just trying to evolve with it. Yeah, in high school, um, I love the corner 15 footers. Yeah. Um, absolutely love them. I kind of got away from it when I got here, but this season specifically, it's more of just driving they're trying to get me drive off the dribble nice pull up trying to extend my game out trying to become more of a guard and then mm -hmm. if i have a mismatch i can go down low and work so right yeah. you've worked a lot on your passing out of the post I, yes. I every time i call a game i see you know they bring three or four and it's a <laughs> quick pass quick decision uh that's something that was basically like hey get better at that over the summer because the years to come you're going to Yes. Seeing three down there. Yes, definitely. I started like I played AAU my senior year for a freshman team 
over the summer because I just wanted to keep playing before college. And like, I would get triple teamed and my coach was like, you just need to throw it. Like (laughs) at some point you just need to get it and get it out of your hands. And then when I came here and coach saw that I could do that, she helped me in ways of how to, okay, you catch, you look for a sack, you take a dribble, back dribble, then you make the thing, you don't just take it and chuck it. Because sometimes, sometimes it'd be happening, but yeah, she's helped me slow down to make the correct Fast pass Make away. The correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could get away with a little bit. I could get away with it here and there, but yeah, but uh, but you know, talk about your work in the off season. I know you, know, you help out around the athletic events mm-hmm. during the year, so thank you so much. Of course, you, you help. Time. You're awesome. I see Ange everywhere. <laughs> and we were talking the, towards the end of summer. You said you know you had uh, a fun summer planned for yourself. What what did that kind of entail, work wise, in terms of basketball? <laughs> so I got to work at a boys and girls club over the summer. And it was all inside in a school, but we had a lot of gym time all the time. So I worked with sixth through eighth graders and I played a lot of basketball with them. Before that kind of started, I was also going to the gym every day. I was running. I ended up getting hurt over the summer and I had to stop for quite a while. But once I got right back to school, I got my injury fixed, got right back on it, but played a lot of basketball with some sixth to eighth graders. Nothing like <laughs> nothing like playing basketball with sixth to eighth nothing graders. Nothing like school and a twelve year old to get the confidence up. It's absolutely amazing because oh. I crossed up a eleven year old and they fell and I was like a god to everyone. Oh my god, yeah. I mean I coached middle school when I was in college or in the winters. I it looked like LeBron out there. Exactly. The only time I was like, I'm the best player on the court right but now. But it low key helped me with my dribbling yeah. because they're like four eleven and right. five two. So I had to dribble a little right. they're to get down through there. them. They're right. down there. So they would tip it out of my hands and I'd be like, You wanna know what? Go ahead, take Guys, it. Bullying eleven year olds work. It yes. makes you a better basketball that player. That is how you get to the <laughs> collegiate level. Oh, of course. Well, Ange, before we, we let you go here, because I know you're a, a busy lass, you got things to do. We play a game here on Inside Rick Athletics. We're going to play a game okay. here with you. So, are you a big fan of music? Yes. I, I know you are, because <laughs> I know that I've asked your teammates, and I ask, like, who has the best music on the team? Your name has come up a couple times. Oh, wow. So, here is the game. Here is what we're going to play today. <laughs> this is called Vibe Check. Oh, All right. Okay. Well, actually, before I ask you this question, we're in 2023 now. Mm-hmm. What was your... All right, put you on the spot. Your favorite album of last year? My favorite. If you could pinpoint album. one or two, who's who, who who dropped the best music in your opinion last year? Um, it's between Rod Wave and A Boogie. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I'm an older A Boogie fan, his new album was good, but Rod Wave's album was probably my favorite of the year because he's my favorite artist. So. Oh, look at you! Look at you! Yes. Look at you! Guys. Well. I will tell you this game, and I'll tell you that Rod Wave was part of the game uh, yes. yesterday with our good friend Mitchell Nareska. So we'll see if he can come. I have some <laughs> Rod Wave on here. So my favorite genre, Ange, it's shuffle. Oh. I love a variety of things. On my phone, I have 7,676 songs. Wow. 7,676. Six. It just gets bigger by the day. So here's the premise of the game. You and I are going to California. We're going to okay. drive from here all the way down. You're driving. I'm on the ox. Yep. I'm going to put shuffle. Okay. The first five songs that come up. Yes. You're gonna tell me if I can keep the ox or if I don't pass the if I pass or don't pass the vibe check. Okay. All right. Is there any songs or a genre that you absolutely can't stand? No, I listen. No, to you listen to everything. Good, yes. good, because I do too. I so, am from the sticks too. So. Right. Yeah. A little <laughs> New New Hampshire raised. I heard you're you're actually from Rhode Island. You're yes. born. You, you told me that like a couple weeks ago. I was like, whoa, look at yeah. that. All right. So for example. Take It All In by Russ is the song that I was listening to event uh, earlier today. So I'll play, put the song into your ear if you don't know the song. You, you, know, you can check it okay. out. At the end, you tell me if I pass it or if I don't. The only time I get to skip a song is if it has an inappropriate title or anything. You know, Family <laughs> okay. show. Can't be yes. doing that. Yes. Our good friend Tony Raynone watches these. We can't. Hello, Tony. See? <laughs> Look at that, Tony. You have friends. All right. So Cash Out by Calvin Harris, Schoolboy Q, Party Next Door, Drum. This is, this is the song. It's a fire song. No? No, it's not. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. I love this album. This album came out. So that's the first song. Conversations in the Dark by John Legend. Definitely, yeah. Definitely just, a slower one. Yeah, a slower one for a nice rainy. It's we're going to hit some rain somewhere. I'm sure. I'm sure yeah. place, you know. Well, I'm sure we're, Figures by Jesse Reyes. Oh, 
Okay. No. All right. So that's three. Hey, you tell. You got to be it's, completely honest. It's okay. Honest I'm being 100 percent yeah. honest. I can't lie to you, Cody. What kind of man are you, by Ray Charles? This is an old one. So there you go. I can see it going through the the Midwest. Right. If yeah. We're going through Kansas, little Ray yes. Charles. It's on. a nice little background music. Oh, this one, two, three, one, two, three, four. This is five. So on Smash by Little Dicky. I love Lil Dicky. There you go. So I love is, Lil Dicky. Do you watch the show? Yes. Dave? Yes. I find it fire. It's coming back in April, fun fact. Uh, for season. Mom, if you're watching this, yes. There you go. <laughs> Miss Nardalillo. Hopefully I, I get the blessings. All right, so Ange, that's five songs. You Be brutally honest with me. Do I pass the vibe? Are you letting me keep the ox? I would because I saw some of your playlists on your computer the other day <laughs> when I was working for you. So, oh, yes. Oh, good. You're just you browsing. No, yeah, that's Yeah, just good. seeing who you were as a person, you know. Thanks. Well, guys, fun fact. This is now 13 for 13. I've passed the vibe check. There you go. There you go. So 100%. And our little everyone. Freaking, freaking get it together. Let's clap it up for Ange. Ange, Woo! you're awesome. We'll Thank see you. you. Good luck the rest Thank of the way. You, we'll Cody. see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Inside Rick Athletics. Make sure to go over to GoAnchorman.com for everything Rhode Island College Athletics. There you can find a varsity schedule so you can pick out uh, what games you want to watch at home with a link to, to the broadcast there, what games you want to come out and see in person, and we'll, we'll see you there. Uh, also, there is a uh, broadcast link that goes right to our YouTube channel, which has all of these Inside Rick Athletics uh, archives. So if you want to watch the first one, if you want to watch the next one, you can go to YouTube, like, subscribe, get notified when those goes up. If you want to watch these live, make sure to check into the broadcast where a lot of these episodes are aired for the first time uh, during halftime of whatever event we are doing. Also, don't forget... Rhode Island College has a radio show that airs every Friday from 4.30 to 5 o'clock on 790 The Score, in, uh, anchored in athletics. Make sure to check that out. George Bischel, our host, has been doing a fantastic job. More interviews with players, more interviews with uh, coaching, and also more interviews with staff around Rhode Island College. And there on GoArkman.com is also an archived list to watch all those that you've maybe missed or you know any of the future. So thank you so much. I've been Cody Shalafu. Have a wonderful rest of your day.